Hello together! In this tutorial I'm showing you how I created this lovely cape from my October Makes video. If you want to see how I managed to get this out of just 80 cm or 32 inches of knitted fabric, keep watching. My first step was to lay the fabric flat on the floor and measure it carefully to see how much I actually had. Then I took a piece of paper and drew a sketch to see if my idea worked out. Especially when you're short of fabric for your project, planning is the most important thing. You can get so much more out of your fabric if you just take a little time and plan everything you're going to cut out. Now I divided the fabric in half and then divided each half in two triangles to determine how much space I had for each of the four parts. Then I measured from my neck to my hips to determine how long the front and the back of the cape had to be and made a mark on the center line from the bottom up to this length as well as on the sides, only this time from the top to the bottom. Next, I measured from my left hand over my shoulders to my right hand while extending them to both sides of my body to get the length of the sides for my cape. I marked those points on the bottom of the fabric towards both sides of the center line and on the top edge from both sides towards the middle. Then I connected both of the markings in each triangle with as much as a round line as possible. Finally, I drew in a round neckline, 5 cm or 2 inches deep at the back and 7 cm or 3 inches deep at the front. Then I cut everything out. You can already see it getting the shape of a coat. However, I had hoped that it looked more like a circle than a square, but I dealt with that later. First, I pinned the two front pieces to the back piece on both sides, then sewed them together. Here's how it looked when I tried it on for the first time. You can clearly see the corners in its shape. So I put it back down on the ground, folded the right onto the left side and cut the edges a lot rounder. Now it already looked a lot better, but is also a little shorter. To solve this issue, I took thick black jersey fabric out of my stash laid it onto the edges of the cape and marked a section I wanted to add to it. Before cutting this shape out four times, I made sure it fitted onto the fabric four times and also leaves enough room for a hood. This is all the pieces laid together. I created the hood by tracing the one from the sweater I wore in the clip where I was trying the cape on. Since I didn't have a piece of fabric large enough to fit the hood onto two times, I modified the pattern a little to fit onto the rest of the fabric. Therefore, I subtracted about 7 cm or 3 inches from the back of the hood, cut these 7 cm or 3 inches as stripes and then added darts to make them fit to the side pieces. This worked out well, the hood has even more volume now. Next. I sewed the hood as well as the other black pieces to the edge of the cape, leaving about 2 cm an inch space to hem the knitted fabric. I did this by hand stitching all around the edge with black wool, but I have to warn you, never hand stitch 3 meters of seam unless you don't mind spending a few hours. Honestly. Now it was time to work on the edge of the black fabric, which means to add the fur trim to it. Therefore, I cut four strips about 7 cm or 3 inches wide out of the fur fabric, then first pinned it onto the black fabric all around the edge, right sides facing, then sewed it down. Next, I turned the fur trim to the left side of the fabric, covering the raw edge of the black fabric and pinned it to the left side of the fabric, this time left sides facing. In the picture, you can see me attaching it to the black fabric by trying to stitch in the ditch from the left side of the coat. However, this was not a good idea because on some parts this happened. It would have worked a lot better if I had attached it from the right side. That way the right side would have looked a lot nicer. Since I didn't want to unpick everything, I just pulled the hairs out from beneath the seams, which turned out okay at the end. Trying on my coat, I realized something was missing. I did everything according to my plan, but the grey knit fabric looked stiff and almost like a knight's armor on me. Even the fluffy fur couldn't change this. I figured out that this was because of the light color of the knit fabric. If it was darker, it would probably fade more from the spotlight. So I went ahead and painted the grey parts black. I used usual fabric color and a sponge for this. 
Since I wanted to create an ombre look, I began at the bottom with more paint and then used less paint as higher as I got. I don't have a picture of the painting process, but that's how it looked as soon as it was dry. That's already a lot better and it even looks more dramatic now. To hide the raw edges of the cape on the front sides, I took a leg of old trousers and used the existing side seams by cutting two squares of the length of the front pieces and about 8 cm or 3 inches width out of the folded fabric. Then I attached them to the cape by sewing them right sides facing onto the knit fabric, turning them around, folding the edge under and stitching them together by stitching in the ditch, this time from the front. Then I folded the top and the bottom edge of these two pieces inwards and quickly hand sewed them close. The only thing still missing was a closure. I had first planned to close the coat with 5 or 6 buttons, but since I didn't find matching buttons and I'm not a big fan of stitching buttonholes, I decided to go another way and add fur bubbles on cords to tie it. For this I cut 4 squares out of the remaining fur, rounded the edge of each one, then stitched around the edge and gathered it to close the opening completely. Then I stitched a few times over the opening, connecting it better and through the sides and the bottom of the bubble to get it to be more compact. For the cords I grabbed the crochet needle, two balls of black cotton yarn and then made a cord out of chain stitches. I needed about 2 meters and 80 centimeters or 110 inches of cord for all four cords. Then I stitched the edge of the cord to a four bubble and held it onto the coat to determine the length of the needed cord. I came up with this design to make the part where the cord meets the fabric more interesting. I marked the point where the orange pin sits and the point where the green pin sits with chalk onto my cord. Then I cut the cord and transferred the needed length and my markings to the other cords. This markings got important now. I took the marking nearest to each fur bubble and pinned the cord at this place to the cape where I wanted it to begin hanging down from the fabric. Then I pinned the second marking sidewards from the first one. Now I began with the loose end of the cord, tying a little circle and pinning it in place on the left side of the design. Then I formed a bigger circle at the middle and with the remaining piece of cord another small circle at the right end. Now I just had to hand stitch this to the fabric quickly. And the cape is finished! Look at how beautifully it drapes! This was my tutorial. I hope you liked it and you find it useful and that you might be inspired to make your own winter cape now. If you want to see more like this, subscribe to my channel. I am trying to do these kind of tutorials every few weeks now. Have a lovely day! Bye!